नमस्कार हाय स्टूडेंट्स संतोष हियर एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिलीवर माय लेक्चर नंबर 3.4 ऑन वाटर सप्लाई इंजीनियरिंग एंड व्हिच डील्स विद द डिसइंफेक्शन एंड व्हिच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वाटर ट्रीटमेंट फॉर किलिंग द बैक्टीरियाज सो वंस अगेन थैंकिंग यू फॉर दोस सब्सक्राइबर्स हु हैव सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल एंड आस्किंग अदर्स टू सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल to get more and more ideas about civil engineering in simple and effective manner so let us start my lecture number 3.4 on disinfection what is disinfection the disinfection is the treatment which is followed by the filtration please remember that it is not substitute for filtration when water comes out from the filter plant it may contain the bacteria and other microorganisms <coughs> and some of which may be pathogenic it is therefore necessary to disinfect the water to kill the bacteria and other microorganisms and thus prevent water borne diseases however as already told disinfection is not a substitute for filtration but disinfection follows filtration when the aim is to kill the microorganism in a water so as to make it sterilized the process is known as sterilization the sterilization is killing the microorganisms in the water to make the water sterilized that is sterilization the aim of disinfection however is to reduce the number of microorganisms to a safe limit disinfection usually requires complicated mechanisms that needs the attentions of skilled operator or supervisor to avoid the breakdown and incorrect dosage that is very important so we are going to discuss the suitability of disinfectant disinfectant is the material or a substance which is used for disinfection of the water a water disinfectant should meet the following requirements the the disinfectant should be effective in killing the microorganisms means it serves serve its purpose potentially present in the water within the contact time available the range of water temperatures encountered and the anticipated fluctuations in composition concentration and condition of water being treated then second the disinfectant should be readily available at the reasonable cost that is most important point and it should be safe to handle and method of application should be simple it should not render the water toxic unpalatable or objectionable aesthetically or otherwise for its intended use so it should not make the water toxic that is very important and it should have ability to persist in the residual concentrations as a safeguard against the recontamination that is also major factor of suitability of disinfectant then we are going to discuss the mechanism of disinfection or theory of disinfection the disinfectant either destroys or inactivates the microorganisms by the way of following four mechanisms damage to the cell wall of microorganisms then alteration of the cell permeability means first it damages the cell wall of microorganisms then it alters the cell permeability changing the colloidal nature of cell protoplasm and inactivation of critical enzyme system responsible for metabolic activities that are the four mechanisms first destroy the cell wall second alteration of cell permeability third changing the colloidal nature of cell protoplasm um, protoplasm and inactivation of the enzyme system responsible for metabolic activities then we are going to discuss the method of disinfection various methods of disinfection can be broadly classified under two heads 
फर्स्ट इज द फिजिकल मेथड्स एंड सेकेंड इज द केमिकल मेथड्स फिजिकल मेथड इंक्लूड द फॉलोइंग डिस इन्फेक्शन बाय द हीट मीन्स बाय बॉइलिंग द वॉटर एंड सेकेंड डिस इन्फेक्शन बाय द लाइट सन लाइट इज द नेचुरल डिस इन्फेक्टन इेडिएशन बाय अल्ट्रा वायोलेट रेज इंटेंसिफाइज द डिस इन्फेक्शन सो यूजिंग द सन लाइट फॉर द डिस इन्फेक्शन इज ऑल्सो अ फिजिकल मेथड केमिकल मेथड्स केमिकल मेथड्स ऑफ डिस इन्फेक्शन इंक्लूड द फॉलोइंग फर्स्ट इज द ऑक्सीडाइजिंग द केमिकल्स दे कॉम्प्रोमाइज द हेलोजन्स क्लोरिन ब्रोमाइन एंड आयोडाइन ओजोन एंड अदर ऑक्सीडेंट्स सच एज पोटेशियम परमैंगनेट एंड हाइड्रोजन पेरोक्साइड मेटल आयन्स सच एज सिल्वर और कॉपर आयन्स सिल्वर आयन्स आर बैक्टेरिसाइडल थ्रू दे आर नाइदर विट्रिसाइडल नॉर क्रिटिसाइडल डिस इन्फेक्शन विथ सिल्वर आयन्स इज जनरली डन इन लो कॉन्सनट्रेशन एज फिफ्टीन पर लीटर पार्ट्स पर बिलियन एंड हेन्स द प्रोसेस इज वेरी स्लो अल्कलीज एंड एसिड्स इट इज वेल नोन दैट पैथोजेनिक बैक्टेरिया डू नॉट लास्ट लॉन्ग इन हाईली अल्कलाइन वेन पी एच वैल्यू इज मोर देन एलेवन और हाईली एसिडिक वेन पी एच वैल्यू इज लेस देन थ्री इन वॉटर द डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द बैक्टेरिया बाय कॉस्टिक लाइम इंसिडेंटल टू लाइम सॉफ्टनिंग इज एन एग्जाम्पल सरफेस एक्टिव केमिकल्स अमंग अमंग दैट द कैथो कैथो कैथोनिक डिटर्जेंट्स आर ओनली वीकली डिस्ट्रक्टिव द नेचुरल डिजल डिटर्जेंट्स अक्यूपाई एन इंटरमीडिएट पोजिशन आउट ऑफ वेरियस मेथड्स मेन्शन अबव फॉर डिस इन्फेक्शन क्लोरिनेशन इज द मोस्ट कॉमनली एडॉप्टेड हाउ एवर इन वॉटर वर्स प्रैक्टिस द टर्म क्लोरिनेशन इज समाइम्स यूज इन प्लेस ऑफ डिस इन्फेक्शन सो क्लोरिनेशन इज द कॉमन मेथड टू डिस इन्फेक्ट द वॉटर सो डिस इन्फेक्शन इज जनरली टर्म एज अ क्लोरिनेशन देन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द क्लोरिनेशन द यूज ऑफ क्लोरिन बिकम्स प्रैक्टिकली यूनिवर्सल इन द डिस इन्फेक्शन ऑफ द वॉटर इट इज चीप इट इज रिलायबल एंड प्रेजेंट्स नो ग्रेटर डिफिकल्टी इन हैंडलिंग दैट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फैक्टर अकॉर्डिंग टू ए डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू ए द अर्लीएस्ट रिकॉर्डेड यूज ऑफ क्लोरिन डायरेक्टली फॉर द वॉटर डिस इन्फेक्शन वॉज ऑन एक्सपेरिमेंटल बेसिस इन एटीन नाइंटी सिक्स एंड एटीन नाइंटी सेवन एट इंग्लैंड इट्स फर्स्ट कंटिन्यूस यूज वॉज इन बेल्जियम इन नाइनटीन सेंचुरी फॉर द ड्यूएल ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ एडिंग कोवेगुलेशन एंड मेक द वॉटर बायोलॉजिकली सेफ the present action by which chlorine kills kills the bacteria in the water is not not known several theories has been put forward but the precise action is not known a commonly accepted theory is enzymatic hypothesis according to this chlorine compounds formed when chlorine is added to the water interface with certain enzymes in the bacterial cells which are vital for further support of life proceed the enzymes involved are created within the cell plasma or cell plasm and hence the action of disinfection proceeds in two uh, two stages first is the penetration in the cell wall by disinfectant and its reaction with the enzymes when chlorine <coughs> is dissolved in water at temperature between 49 degree fahrenheit to 212 degree fahrenheit it reacts to form hypochlorous and hydrochloric acids within few seconds the chemical reaction is like this cl2 plus h2 is equal to hocl plus hcl that is hydrolysis the hydrochlorous acid hocl ionizes or dissociates into hydrogen ions and hypochloric ions that is hocl plus hcl and then hocl is converted into h plus ocl that is ionization and it is the hypochlorous acid and hypochlorite ions which accomplish disinfection 
thus when chlorine is added into water all the three that is elemental chlorine hypochlorous acid and hypochlorite ions are formed and they remain in the equilibrium at different concentrations depending upon the ph value of water which controls the amount of dissociation forms of application of the chlorine chlorine may be applied into water in the following forms first as a bleaching powder or hypochlorite as a chloromines as a free chlorine gas and as a chlorine dioxide bleaching powder bleaching powder or a calcium hypochlorite that is ca into bracket ocl bracket complete 2 is the chlorinated lime containing about 33.33% of available chlorine when freely made when chlorination was first introduced bleaching powder was exclusively used however bleaching powder is not stable as it loses its strength during the storage or exposure to the air it is therefore used only on small installations or under emergency conditions the process of chlorination with chloromides is known as a hypochlorination commercial compounds such as a hth <coughs> then pitticide then hood chlor etc are used instead of bleaching powder the oxidizing powder of hypochlorite is represented in terms of available chlorine then second is the chloromines chloromines are the compounds of ammonia and chlorine chlorine the widespread adoption of the chlorine ammonia treatment followed recognition that the combination of chlorine and ammonia produced is a more safe disinfecting residual than produced by chlorine alone and that the process could be applied to limit the development of objectionable tests in this treatment ammonia as a nh3 is added in the water just before the chlorine is applied means first ammonia is applied and then chlorine is applied the usual proportion is one part of ammonia to 4.5 parts of chlorine by weight the following reactions takes place h2o plus cl2 is equal to hcl plus hcl then nh3 means ammonia nh3 plus hocl is equal to h2o plus nh2cl that is monochloromine then nh2cl plus hocl is equal to h2o plus nhcl2 that is dichloromine and nhcl2 plus hocl is equal to h2o plus ncl3 that is trichloromine so you must remember this chemical reactions then free chlorine chlorine is generally applied in the gaseous form or in liquid form gaseous chlorine is a greenish yellow poisonous substance with a typical odor and about 2.48 times heavier than air you must remember that that free chlorine is 2.48 times heavier than air liquid chlorine is amber colored only liquid and about 1.44 times as heavy as water <coughs> unconfined liquid chlorine rapidly vaporizes vaporizes to the gas volume of liquid yields about 462 volumes of gas when chlorine gas is subjected to a pressure of 7 kg per cm square it is converted into a liquid hence chlorine is stored and supplied in liquid form in metal containers under the pressure of 10.5 kg per cm square since liquid chlorine is highly corrosive the cylinders containing liquid chlorine are provided with the special fittings to avoid that corrosion the cylinders are built to withstand bursting pressure of 35 kg per cm square corresponding to the temperature of 190 fahrenheit such a information is asked in multiple choice questions so you must remember these values of 35 kg per cm square and corresponding temperature of 190 degree fahrenheit then chlorine dioxide or chlorine dioxide according to ridner and iglos bacterial properties of chlorine dioxide is greater than chlorine the chlorine dioxide gas is unstable and is therefore produced at the point of use by passing chlorine gas through sodium chloride 
the following reaction takes place 2 na clo2 plus cl2 is equal to 2 nacl plus 2 cio2 until the until present time the use of chlorine dioxide has been limited to special water treatment applications such as oxidation of the iron manganese and phenolic and chlorophenolic compounds for control of algae chlorine dioxide theoretically has about 2.5 times the oxidizing power of chlorine it does not react with the organic materials to produce the chloroform a potential carcinogen it does not react with ammonia and it entirely harmless in aqueous solution so it is very important it does not react with the ammonia and it entirely harmless in aqueous solution then form of chlorination which is very important and all the time the question asked on that different forms of chlorination depending upon the stage at which chlorine is applied to the water chlorination may be in the following forms first is the pre plain chlorination second is the pre chlorination third is the post chlorination fourth is the double or multiple chlorination fifth is the breakpoint chlorination sixth is the super chlorination and last one d is the dechlorination so you must remember plain pre post double or multiple breakpoint super and d or die <laughs> plain chlorination plain chlorination is the application of chlorine to the plain or raw water supply as it enters to the distribution system it also includes the chlorination of raw waters in the tank or reservoir to check the growth of weeds organic matter algae and bacteria it also removes the color and odor from odor from water plain chlorination to the untreated water is resorted to when water is relatively clear with turbidity is less than 20 to 30 ppm the normal dose is between 0.5 to 1 ppm that dosage is very important 0.5 to 1 ppm pre chlorination it is the application of chlorine <coughs> to the water before it before its treatment specially before the filtration so before filtration pre chlorination is done sometimes <coughs> chlorination is done before the raw water enters into the sedimentation tank this helps in reducing the amount of coagulant required because the oxidation of organic matter in alkaline water chlorination may precede the aeration the dose of chlorine should be adjusted such that the water has chlorine residual of 0.5 to 0.5 ppm when it enters to the filter plant post chlorination name itself indicates it is the post treatment it is the application of what uh, application of chlorine to the water after its treatment this is the standard form of chlorination in which chlorine is added to the water when it leaves from the filtration or rapid filters and before it enters to the distribution system the dose of chlorine should be so adjusted that you must know that that residual chlorine is about 0.1 to 0.2 ppm before water enters to the distribution system it is very useful for protection against contamination of uh, contamination from cross connections double or multiple chlorination double or multiple chlorination refers to the application of chlorine for two or more points of purification processes generally double filtration is resorted to in which chlorine is applied just before water enters into the sedimentation tank and after it leaves the filtration means before sedimentation and after filtration <coughs> this is done specially when the raw water is highly contaminated and contains large amount of bacterial life and other organic matters the advantages of double chlorination are similar to that of pre chlorination in addition the maintenance of two chlorinating plants serves as a factor of safety breakpoint chlorination all the time it is a favorite question in any examination when chlorine is applied to water two actions takes place after the other first it kills the bacteria and disinfection is effected and it oxidizes the organic matter 
the break point in the chlorination of the water may be defined as the point on applied residual chlorine curve at which or nearly all the residual chlorine is free chlorine. Please look at this figure or graph. This graph is comparison between the applied chlorine in PPM against residual chlorine in PPM. So, <coughs> there are various stages of chlorination. Stage 1 is the initial chlorine demand. Stage 2 is the chloromides and combined residual <coughs> chlorine forming. And stage 3 is the free of chlorine breaking point or free chlorine breaking down chloromides and stage 4 is the free chlorine residual forming. So, please look at this figure and this point is the break point. From the figure you must know that this one, this point is the break point. So, <coughs> you must know what is the break point chlorination. Break point chlorination means where there all residual chlorine is the free chlorine. Then we are do, going to discuss the superchlorination. Superchlorination is the application of chlorine beyond the stage of breakpoint. Means we have to apply the chlorine beyond the stage of breakpoint. The addition of chlorine sufficient for sufficient to give a residual chlorine content about 1 to 3 ppm has proved useful to destroy odor and taste resulting from chloro products formed between the decomposition products from vegetable matter and algae. Superchlorination is followed by a retention of retention by a retention or a contact period of 30 to 60 minutes when the residual is discharged by means of dichlorination agents. Superchlorination is adopted when there is an epidemic in the locality or when water is liable to sudden fluctuations in chlorine demand containing high concentration of organic impurities. Means, whenever there is a high content of organic impurities, you go for superchlorination and apply chlorine beyond the point of break point. Dichlorination, it is the process of removing excess chlorine from the water before distribution to the consumers to avoid the chlorine test. Dichlorination is achieved either by aeration or by use of chemical such as sodium thiosulfate, sodium biosulfate, sodium sulfide, activated carbon, potassium permanganate or sulfur dioxide in gas, gaseous or liquid form. Sulfur dioxide and sodium disulfide are generally preferred for large supplies. Sodium dioxide gas is applied practically in the same manner as a chlorine with a contact period of dechlorination of not less than 10 to 15 minutes. That contact period of 10 to 15 minutes is important and generally 0.3 to 0.6 ppm of sulfur dioxide may be required for dichlorination. Means dichlorination is removal of chlorine from the water when it reaches to the consumer to avoid the false smell or odor. So, that's enough in this lecture and I am going to deliver the another lectures on water supply engineering and after covering that water supply engineering, I am going to deliver the lectures on estimating and costing. So, please listen my lecture till then very carefully to get the ideas cleared in civil engineering. Thanking you. Until then, bye-bye.